Hey Joey, only here today for Interior Weather Wilderness Watchers. We got some weather change happening. We're gonna go back up on top of Island Mountain again today because I'm cutting firewood. Yesterday I was talking about radio safety, so here I am at the bottom of Red Road. I'm gonna call up on uh, the radio, pick up a zero kilometer up Red Road, and uh, we'll head to the top. And when I get up there, I'll put my radio to scan, so if there's a call in Wells, the fire department, I will hear that too. Short distance back. So now we are at the top of Island Mountain. That's the second summit right there. There's three that are roughly the same height. And uh, so that's, I don't know, 65, 6,700 feet right there. Today there's some beautiful signs of change in the sky. I mean, you look at the, these upper, this top deck here and you see all these nice little lines across the sky, all these pressure indicators all these signs of change. So each day we've been up here, we've been able to see more and more of uh, the change that's been happening and coming through the week. So I'm expecting sort of a period of snow to start through BC starting tomorrow, although maybe here in the Caribou we won't get as much of it yet. Today in Haida Gwaii there's strong wind warnings again and up in Haines Junction it's the same old story. Another uh, blizzard there so uh, that's just some of the things that will be coming to us in the next weekend. And these are the skies of change. Snow's pretty deep, by the way. Uh, avalanche, uh, they're really uh, trying to press people into staying off the steep slopes of the backcountry right now. So uh, check your avalanche forecast at avalanche.ca. Okay, so uh, just a little note on uh, fuel. Some people mix their... Uh, gas and oil for uh, 25 to 1, 40 to 1, 50 to 1. To be honest, I think what matters most is that you just have oil in there. I mean, uh, I've heard lots of arguments for different mixes. And to be honest, I usually pour a shitload in that 150 milliliters in my two or five gal uh, liter can. And that's been what I use. It's I don't put a lot of thought into it. Get some oil in there. That's the most important thing. Another thing I want to talk about too is... Uh, in my truck always is a first aid kit. Of course, I'm an, uh, a level three first aider myself, and that's one of my jobs in wildfire and with, uh, well, when I work in general. Uh, it's good to have a first aid kit. It's also really important that you know how to use one. And uh, if you have a chance to uh, take a first aid course, please do. But then remember uh, as well, uh, like, you know, one of my sayings that uh, our first aid teacher taught or said to us was, uh, he said, does anyone have first aid? And then, uh, Everyone put their hands up. Yeah, I got level one. He said, good. Yeah, you know, just enough to really do someone some harm. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's good to have first aid. It's good to learn, but uh, there's a lot to know. So with everything uh, that we do out here, try to learn more and more and more. Try to learn more about the trees, the forest, your machines, the weather, everything you can. And one last shot. Look at this beautiful sky coming in, man. You can just see the change in the air already. Beautiful. This tree fell over. If you look, you can see its roots gave way. It wasn't deeply rooted in the soil, but something else happened too. And if uh, I don't know if you can tell here with this shot, but there's burns all along these roots. It was, it was burning at the roots. So I'm going to make a guess here. This tree was struck by lightning. There was no other uh, fire in this area that I've ever seen in any of my uh, falling trees and doing shit like that. So. This tree burnt at the roots down the duff and then eventually fell over and uh, fire never spread. Just stayed right here. Had this road to protect it, I guess. So uh, here's the sister tree, that big one down here that fell over I was just talking about. Big, beautiful tree. I love falling trees like this that are so big because uh, there's a lot more work, a room to play with. My saw is greedy. I got plenty of time to make adjustments. But look at the size of this guy. Just a beautiful tree. And uh, one thing I'll tell you about here in the Wells area, when you come into zones where there's these giant trees, because this is Island Mountain where, you know, millions of ounces of gold came out of this mountain. When you come to an area in the mountain where there's uh, big trees, the first thing that you know is that uh, nobody really mined here uh, for placer, and I can tell you why, because these are the areas that have no water. So you're up on high on the mountain, and I'm sure uh, there was prospectors that wanted to have a look in here and poked around back in the day. 
they didn't. Now you look over and this is the tree that was falling over. I said was struck by lightning. And just look at the view out it has. And imagine sitting on that rocky shelf. What a friggin' lightning target it was. And uh, I've heard old men say that if uh, lightning strikes the same place twice, you better get the claim on that. Something metals in the ground. Lightning does strike the same place twice. Total myth that it doesn't. I've seen it at my mom's house strike the same area like 10 times in one storm. Like literally hit the same spot, hit the same spot. So uh, don't fool yourself. Lightning strikes twice. Uh, here's our beautiful view. And one last note in the sky. Can't really tell from this angle. Maybe we'll have one more shot before we get off the mountain today. These are the skies have changed. You've been seeing it all day. Yesterday we, or Wednesday we had the storm come in. Thursday we, no, uh, Thursday, what day is it? Thursday. Tuesday we had the storm come in. Wednesday we had uh, that nice, clear, clean, clear day I photographed yesterday. Today it's overcast. Stratiform is moving in, giving us signs of the change. By tomorrow we might see some of that at this time, although I think, uh, the, the main body of that energy is going to come to this area uh, sometime early Saturday. And we may have a few days of snow throughout the province. Again, just uh, looking at the wet skies today. Can you see these cool lines? I love stuff like that. It's always telling you that uh, change is happening in the air. Looking straight across here, you see where that kind of white area is with the like a mine or whatever there and then you see the canyon up behind it you know what that is is that's devil's canyon on highway 26 the markerville highway the famous devil's canyon yeah these are cool skies the skies have changed i'm joe the only for interior weather wilderness watchers thanks very much for joining us on another episode today we'll see you next time we were delivering wood to our neighbor Peter Corbett and I thought I'd talk to Pete for two seconds today because uh, he's a marine biologist and uh, A, your thoughts in the winter, what are the fish doing right now and uh, then we'll ask you about your painting you've been doing yesterday I saw you. Well, you know, the fish are really happy. This is, uh, I think this is the longest period. It took the longest for the jacket clubs to freeze. The Willow River still has lots and lots of open water on it. Never seen that. We have so much less snow. So, you know, this is going to be the shortest winter these fish have experienced. At this elevation, you know, we're quite high. Now, it's pretty tough being a fish. The growing season's a handful of months, so extending that a couple of months is going to be really good for them. I think they're going to be pretty darn happy. <laughs> right on. And uh, you're a painter. Yep. Tell us about that nice sunset you were seeing yesterday. I oh, was, uh, you know. We have a video from yesterday we put up. Right. Well, you know, here I, I like painting snow more than I like painting anything. So I live in the right place to do that. And again, being at this elevation, we just get spectacular sunsets all winter long. And uh, like nowhere else I've ever been. So, you know, three o'clock, it's like, yeah, start sniffing. Without the photochemical help. Exactly. And all of a sudden you get that smoky electric in the sky and things start lighting up and it's everywhere. It's up and glow to the west. It's actually, or to the west, the sunset actually to the east. It's just, it's absolutely spectacular. Totally great. I'd love to sit down with you and do an actual episode with you on full. We should and do that. Absolutely. That love will happen. It. So keep uh, tuned into your weather and wilderness watchers because we'll be talking at some point. Excellent. With marine biologist Peter Corbett and my neighbor. All right. Have a great day.